July 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 24 and 25 from the Old Testament. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. He reigned for 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Zibiah, who was from Beersheba. Joash did what the Lord approved throughout the lifetime of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada chose two wives for him, who gave him sons and daughters. Joash was determined to repair the Lord's temple. He assembled the priests and Levites and ordered them, Go out to the cities of Judah and collect the annual quota of silver from all Israel for repairs on the temple of your God. Be quick about it. But the Levites delayed. So the king summoned Jehoiada, the chief priest, and said to him, why have you not made the Levites collect from Judah and Jerusalem the tax authorized by Moses, the Lord's servant, and by the assembly of Israel at the tent containing the tablets of the law? Wicked Athaliah and her sons had broken into God's temple and used all the holy items of the Lord's temple in their worship of the balls. The king ordered a chest to be made and placed outside the gate of the Lord's temple. An edict was sent throughout Judah and Jerusalem requiring the people to bring to the Lord the tax that Moses, God's servant, imposed on Israel in the wilderness. All the officials and all the people gladly brought their silver and threw it into the chest until it was full. Whenever the Levites brought the chest to the royal accountant, they saw there was a lot of silver. The royal scribe and the accountant of the high priest emptied the chest and then took it back to its place. They went through this routine every day and collected a large amount of silver. The king and Jehoiada gave it to the construction foreman assigned to the Lord's temple. They hired carpenters and craftsmen to repair the Lord's temple, as well as those skilled in working with iron and bronze to restore the Lord's temple. They worked hard and made the repairs. They followed the measurements specified for God's temple and restored it. When they were finished, they brought the rest of the silver to the king and Jehoiada. They used it to make items for the Lord's temple, including items used in the temple service and for burnt sacrifices, pans, and various other gold and silver items. Throughout Jehoiada's lifetime, burnt sacrifices were offered regularly in the Lord's temple. Jehoiada grew old and died at the age of 130. He was buried in the city of David with the kings because he had accomplished good in Israel and for God and his temple. After Jehoiada died, the officials of Judah visited the king and declared their loyalty to him. The king listened to their advice. They abandoned the temple of the Lord God of their ancestors and worshipped the Asherah poles and idols. Because of this sinful activity, God was angry with Judah and Jerusalem. The Lord sent prophets among them to lead them back to him. They warned the people, but they would not pay attention. God's Spirit energized Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He stood up before the people and said to them, This is what God says. Why are you violating the commands of the Lord? You will not be prosperous. Because you have rejected the Lord, he has rejected you. They plotted against him and by royal decree stoned him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Joash disregarded the loyalty his father Jehoiada had shown him and killed Jehoiada's son. As Zechariah was dying, he said, May the Lord take notice and seek vengeance. At the beginning of the year, the Syrian army attacked Joash and invaded Judah and Jerusalem. They wiped out all the leaders of the people and sent all the plunder they gathered to the king of Damascus. Even though the invading Syrian army was relatively weak, the Lord handed over to them Judah's very large army, for the people of Judah had abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors. The Syrians gave Joash what he deserved. When they withdrew, they left Joash badly wounded. His servants plotted against him because of what he had done to the son of Jehoiada, the priest. They murdered him on his bed. Thus he died and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. The conspirators were Zabad, son of Shimeath, an Ammonite woman, and Jehozabad, son of Shimrith, a Moabite woman. 
the list of Joash's sons, the many prophetic oracles pertaining to him, and the account of his building project on God's temple are included in the record of the scroll of the kings. His son Amaziah replaced him as king. Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Jehoiadun, who was from Jerusalem. He did what the Lord approved, but not with wholehearted devotion. When he had secured control of the kingdom, he executed the servants who had assassinated his father. However, he did not execute their sons. He obeyed the Lord's commandment as recorded in the law scroll of Moses. Fathers must not be executed for what their sons do, and sons must not be executed for what their fathers do. A man must be executed only for his own sin. Amaziah assembled the people of Judah and assigned them by families to the commanders of units of a thousand and the commanders of units of a hundred for all Judah and Benjamin. He counted those twenty years old and up and discovered there were three hundred thousand young men of fighting age equipped with spears and shields. He hired a hundred thousand Israelite warriors for a hundred talents of silver. But a prophet visited him and said, O king, the Israelite troops must not go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel or any of the Ephraimites. Even if you go and fight bravely in battle, God will defeat you before the enemy. God is capable of helping or defeating. Amaziah asked the prophet, But what should I do about the hundred talents of silver I paid the Israelite troops? The prophet replied, The Lord is capable of giving you more than that. So Amaziah dismissed the troops that had come to him from Ephraim and sent them home. They were very angry at Judah and returned home incensed. Amaziah boldly led his army to the Valley of Salt, where he defeated 10,000 Edomites. The men of Judah captured 10,000 men alive. They took them to the top of a cliff and threw them over. All the captives fell to their death. Now the troops Amaziah had dismissed and had not allowed to fight in the battle raided the cities of Judah from Samaria to Beth Haran. They killed 3,000 people and carried off a large amount of plunder. When Amaziah returned from defeating the Edomites, he brought back the gods of the people of Seir and made them his personal gods. He bowed down before them and offered them sacrifices. The Lord was angry at Amaziah and sent a prophet to him who said, Why are you following these gods that could not deliver their own people from your power? While he was speaking, Amaziah said to him, Did we appoint you to be a royal counselor? Stop prophesying or else you will be killed. So the prophet stopped but added, I know that the Lord has decided to destroy you because you have done this thing and refused to listen to my advice. After King Amaziah of Judah consulted with his advisors, he sent this message to the king of Israel, Joash, son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu. Come face me on the battlefield. King Joash of Israel sent this message back to King Amaziah of Judah. A thorn bush in Lebanon sent this message to a cedar in Lebanon. Give your daughter to my son as a wife. Then a wild animal of Lebanon came by and trampled down the thorn bush. You defeated Edom and it has gone to your head. Gloat over your success but stay in your palace. Why bring calamity on yourself? Why bring down yourself and Judah along with you? But Amaziah did not heed the warning, for God wanted to hand them over to Joash because they followed the gods of Edom. So King Joash of Israel attacked. He and King Amaziah of Judah faced each other on the battlefield in Beth Shemesh of Judah. Judah was defeated by Israel and each man ran back home. King Joash of Israel captured King Amaziah of Judah, son of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, in Beth Shemesh and brought him to Jerusalem. He broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, a distance of about 600 feet. He took away all the gold and silver, all the items found in God's temple that were in the care of Obed-Edom, the riches in the royal palace, and some hostages. Then he went back to Samaria. 
King Amaziah, son of Joash of Judah, lived for fifteen years after the death of King Joash, son of Jehoahaz of Israel. The rest of the events of Amaziah's reign, from start to finish, are recorded in the scroll of the kings of Judah and Israel. From the time Amaziah turned from following the Lord, conspirators plotted against him in Jerusalem, so he fled to Lachish. But they sent assassins after him, and they killed him there. His body was carried back by horses, and he was buried in Jerusalem with his ancestors in the city of David. God in chapter 25, verses 7-ish, 7, 8, 9 when the prophet is talking to Amaziah and he's like, don't be doing this. Don't be going out into the battle this way because God is not with you. And he goes on to say, even if you go and fight bravely in battle, God will defeat you before the enemy. God is capable of helping or defeating. Then, just like all the rest of us humans, Amaziah says, yeah, but what about the money I already paid the Israelite troops? Yeah, but what about my plans? Yeah, but what about all the things that I've already done? Yeah, but what about my kingdom, God? And the prophet said, the Lord is capable of giving you more than that. I wonder why we don't get that. I, I wonder why we are missing the fact that you want to give us so much and so many fabulous things. H how do we miss this? How do we not believe this? How do we want to hold on to our world and our kingdom and our control and our desires and wants so much more than what you're willing to give us? One of my favorite quotes, and you already know this, God, is by C.S. Lewis. And he says, indeed, if we consider the unblushing promises of rewards and the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Where does that come from, God? Is it because we honestly are down in the, the mud here on earth and we can't even envision a life beyond that? Is it because we know that we don't deserve love, especially not the overwhelming, merciful, powerful love that, that you give us? Do we also not believe that we deserve to have better than what we have? A, a different life, a better choices to live for an almighty king forever and ever. The Lord is capable of giving you more than that. God, bring that, that part of the Bible to our hearts today and going forward over and over and over again to remind us the Lord is capable of giving you more than that. With my small, small, finite mind, I can't imagine if I went to all the trouble of making something creating something and spent at least for me an, a, a multitude of hours and resources on creating something I would want what's best for it I wouldn't turn around and sit it outside in one of our torrential downpours here in the Washington area the Seattle area and, and watch it be destroyed um, I wouldn't throw it away in the trash I wouldn't give it away I would want what's best for it. I would give it a place of honor in my home. I would dust it, maybe build a case for it. All of that for an inanimate object, yet you created us, God. You knew exactly how we would turn out, who we would be, the gifts you would give us before we were even born. You so lovingly, lovingly crafted a masterpiece. How in the world could we even think that you would want less than what is the best for us? Why do we hold on so tightly to the consumables that we have here in this world? 
when you've told us over and over again, I am capable of giving you so much more than this. It'd be like winning the lottery and going, no, the ticket that it says I won the lottery, that's good enough for me. I don't, I don't really need the money. <laughs> Thanks for offering it. I mean, it's that same insanity. And something I know we struggle with because we truly believe we don't deserve more than what we have. We do of the world. We expect better jobs, better pay, better cars, better houses, better relationships. And those are all the things that you're trying to say, no, I can give you something more. I can give you something that you can't even imagine. God, allow us today as we go through our day to see the mud pies that are in our life that are so common to us that we've gotten so used to and help remind us that you're offering us a holiday at the sea. That even though we may not have, never have been there before, just the fact that you who gives us all good things is offering it should be enough fabulousness to be really excited about giving up our common things, the things that we have grown used to having. For you who is capable of giving us so much more. In your son's name I pray. Amen.